Hey, it's Zach from HowChew.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about Raspberry Pi starter kits, whether they're worth it, what to watch out for, and when you should just build your own. We've all been there. You have a cool idea for a Raspberry Pi project or you've seen one online you don't know where to start. Well, you can either buy everything individually or you can choose from one of the many, many, many starter kits out there. A starter kit comes with a set of components, including a Raspberry Pi computer, that you'll need to complete a project. Now, as starter kits have been growing in popularity, along with the Pi, we get this question a lot. Should I buy a starter kit, or should I just buy everything individually? Well, the answer is actually a resounding, that depends. Whether or not a starter kit is worth it depends largely on three factors. What you plan on using the Pi for, what components it comes with, and whether they're up to snuff, and the price of the kit. In this guide, I'll briefly explain which components your starter kit should contain, what to watch out for with each component, and help you decide whether or not a starter kit is right for you. Even if you don't plan on getting a starter kit, this guide will show you everything that you need to set up a Raspberry Pi for a basic project, so it lists all the components. So it's still gonna be useful one way or another. Now to help in our analysis, I got a pretty standard starter kit from Amazon that's similar to a lot of the other ones that you'll see. I chose this one because it has the bare minimum of what you'll need to do any project. So I'll be using this as an example throughout the guide. I also created a text and image based version of this guide and I've linked to that in the video description. In there you'll find a little bit more detailed information as well as links to some of the components that I discuss and a link to the kit that I'm using as an example. And as always, be sure to subscribe. We have a lot of new content coming out. I know we've been a little bit slow, but we're really ramping things up now. So you have a lot to look forward to. So I found a pretty standard starter kit on Amazon to use as an example. Um, it seemed like a pretty good deal. It seems to have all the right components with the right specs and it's pretty much the minimum of what you'll need to do any Raspberry Pi project. So this is called the A-Box. Yes, it's like an Xbox, but with an A. And it's a start kit, not starter kit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through each component in order of what I think is most important uh, so you can get a good idea of what's in the box. Now the first thing to look for in your kit is that it contains a Raspberry Pi computer. I mean every kit should or else I don't think you should get that kit. And most kits will either contain a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 0. The 0 is a much smaller computer that's less powerful. Um, for most projects you'll want to use the 3 and um, it's the most powerful one that they sell. So the 3 is usually about $35 by itself. And the only reason I would use a zero is if you had space constraints, like if you were trying to build something in a very small enclosure. A uh, quick note about Raspberry Pi Zero starter kits, make sure you get one that says zero W. The W is for wireless. If it doesn't have the W, it's the normal Pi. It doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so you're gonna have a bad time with that one. So this is a pretty standard Raspberry Pi 3. Nothing special about this. Anti-static bag. Yep. Next most important thing is the Raspberry Pi power adapter. Now all power adapters are gonna be five volts because that's what USB voltage is. But what's important is the amperage. You wanna always use a power supply that's at least two amps, preferably two and a half amps. Now once you start plugging things into your Pi, it's gonna start straining. Even a keyboard with some LEDs and a built-in hub is gonna be draw a bit of power. You can't just use your cell phone charger as the power adapter because it's not gonna provide the right amperage. And when you use your Pi, you'll actually see either yellow lightning bolts in the corner or worse, you won't see one and things will just randomly fail and you'll have no idea why. One thing that's interesting about this one and this has been popping up a lot is it has a power button on it. Um, that's kind of gimmicky. When you shut down your desktop computer, you just rip the plug out of the wall. Using this switch is pretty much like just ripping the adapter out of the wall. Doing that is bad because anything that's being written to can get corrupted, so things that are in memory, and it only takes a couple times of not shutting your Pi down properly to corrupt it and your SD card will no longer function. Now it is good for turning it on, so after you've shut off your Pi properly, you can just push this button, I guess twice, to turn it back on. But you don't really need this, so yeah. The individual cost for a power supply like this that's two and a half amps is about nine bucks. Um, something very important for your Pi project is the SD card and a lot of people ask about this, what size should I get? And I think people kind of harp on that too much. Um, you don't need a huge card. If you're doing like a, a, a retro gaming project using RetroPi, then you don't really need a huge card. See back in the day, uh, computer memory chips were very expensive and so game developers had to get clever with how they built their games so they take up less space and the result is that the game ROMs are actually pretty small. For example, in Super Mario Brothers, 
you'll notice the clouds and the bushes are exactly the same sprite, they just change the color. I would say at a minimum you want a 16 gig card in your kit, but the 32 gigabyte card is certainly welcome in case you want to add future functionality. So a few things to keep in mind when choosing an SD card. You'll want to make sure that the kit actually specifies the manufacturer in addition to the size. Read and write speeds are actually really important. It's kind of like putting a crappy hard drive in your computer. The SD card is the hard drive for the Raspberry Pi. So I always go with a good one like the SanDisk Ultra, um, and I've never had a bad time with those. One other consideration to make with SD cards is counterfeits. Counterfeit cards are usually larger, like 64 gigs or 128 gigs, so it's probably not a huge issue if you get a smaller one. After all, nobody counterfeits a $1 bill, so the larger ones are usually targeted. Again, the size of the SD card that you choose will depend on what your project is. If you're using Kodi and you want to store media files on it, obviously you need a larger card. But very large cards are going to have issues with the Pi, they're just not designed for it. You can still use external storage like USB drives on your Pi to access movies and games, so you don't really need a huge one. And this card alone is about 13 bucks on Amazon. Another thing you're gonna always want for your Pi projects are heat sinks. Now these actually go on the ethernet chip, which is also the USB chip, and on the CPU. Um, this kit came with three. Looks like there's one for the memory chip on the bottom of the Pi, though I don't think that's really necessary. I guess it's kind of cool, but generally you only need two. Now when you're choosing a kit, make sure your heat sinks meet a few minimum requirements the material doesn't matter. Um, this, there's an aluminum one and a copper one in here. Unless you're water cooling your pie, it doesn't really matter uh, which one. What's most important is the size, and that's the vertical height of the thing. This one is aluminum, but it's very tall, so this seems sufficient. The ones that are very short do next to nothing. Now this copper one that goes in the CPU, um, I'm not really sure how well this will work out. It is pretty small, I'll probably swap it out, but I have a whole bunch of these things. They're super cheap, um, like here's a pretty tall one. So, you know, you wanna basically look at the height of it. Next thing that's important about your heat sinks is the adhesive material. You wanna choose one that uses legit, like 3M tape. Some of the more generic ones, actually, they don't conduct heat away from the component. They end up insulating it and trapping the heat in there, which is worse. I can't tell what some of these are because they're so small that there's just like a white spot. I do see one has 3M, so I'm hopeful that the other ones also use the same adhesive. So um, when choosing a kit, make sure that there are pictures of the heat sinks, preferably of the bottom too, so you can make and make sure that they're tall enough. Of course, if they're too tall, they won't fit in your case. Now onto something a little more interesting, the case. So this kit comes with a pretty standard pie case. There's not a whole lot to say about cases. Cheap ones are fine. Just make sure that it has good ventilation, which this one does have. Easy access to the ports that you need for your project. Depending on what your project is, you might need access to your headers, so some cases don't give you access to that, so you wanna make sure that the one that you choose gives you access to all the ports that you need. And this one's actually, I think it's usually about $7 on Amazon, so not a bad deal at all. Now there are some things that you're gonna to wanna to look for in your kit that are also nice to have. For example, does it come with a USB adapter for the micro SD card? Um, this one is both a type C and regular USB, which is kinda of cool, and you'll definitely need this because you have to put card into your computer at some point to set up your Raspberry Pi, no matter what you're going to use it for. So make sure that it comes with an adapter, and if not, factor that into the price. Um, this one is usually about $7 on its own, so that's nice to have. Um, also, obviously things like HDMI cables, you probably have some extras in your house, but these are still nice to have. This one is only like two feet long, which is actually useful for what I'm going to use my Pi for, but it might not be uh, good for your setup. And these are, you know, like five or six dollars each. So it's nice when it comes with that. Now, one thing that this kit does not come with are USB controllers. And if you're going to do a RetroPie setup, obviously you'll need those. Um, I recommend buying those separately, though, because the kits that come with USB controllers, they usually use the bottom of the barrel, really crappy USB controllers, and they're not all made the same. Some of them won't be as responsive. They won't last as long they just will kind of quit. Um, you really want to do some research and read reviews when you're getting a USB controller and not just get one that happens to come in a kit. So I recommend not getting kits that have the controllers and buying those separately and you'll be better off. Now if you're planning on building something really neat with your Pi like things with LEDs and buttons and all that, there are some monster kits out there that sell like tons of LEDs and buttons and resistors and transistors and uh, connectors and you know, it's kind of tempting to buy these massive kits, but you might be better off buying a separate dedicated set of components. Like you can buy an entire set of resistors and LEDs usually 
less expensively separately. Um, what you're, what's going to happen is you're going to buy a lot of stuff that you'll never use, and so that's being added on to the cost. So depending on what you want to build, you might want to stay away from the huge massive kits. Here's an example of a kit that comes with tons of stuff. This is actually an Arduino kit, not a Raspberry Pi kit, but it's an example of, you know, it comes with a bunch of LEDs, some jumper wires, some resistors, a bunch of random little things, uh, servo, and you know, it's really cool to have this stuff around if you uh, have a moment of inspiration, you don't wanna have to wait for it in the mail, but just factor it into your cost. Still, it is cool to have this stuff around, and if you have an idea or see something online, you don't have to wait a week for it to arrive, you know, all the pieces that you need, you can just get going right then. But most of the time, these kits just contain things that you really don't need. All right, so this is everything that comes in the A-Box kit. I looked up the price of each individual item, which I've listed, and it would end up costing me $82 to buy all these individual components. Everything's up to snuff. I wish that this heat sink were a little bit taller, but these are cheap and easily replaceable. Everything else is pretty much what I would have purchased if I bought them individually. And this kit sells for like $65 to $70. I've seen the price jump around. So for 82 bucks, you do save some money. I mean, at the very minimum, this is what you will need to do any project. Unless, of course, you're building something that has its own case, in which case you won't need this or if you're using a battery pack with a voltage uh, booster, then you won't need this. And if you're not gonna be actually connecting it to a TV, then you won't need this. So the point is that you really need to look at what your project is. For a very basic project, this will work great. And just keep an eye, make sure that when you're looking at a kit, they're actually listing all the specifications or else you're gonna end up with a bunch of crap. Anyways, I hope you learned something interesting today. I want to hear about your Pi project. If you want to post in the comments section, I'd love to hear about what you're working on or what you're looking to work on. Um, also, be sure to subscribe so you can check out our future videos that are coming soon. And check out the video description for a link to the kit that I featured in this video and also for links to other guides that I may have mentioned in passing. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.